So in this video, I want to discuss the difference between driven and driving dimensions. This is something I think I've touched on in other videos, but I got a question about it and it is important. So on the screen, I've got two parts that look identical and they, ha they have the same dimensions, right? They're each two inches tall, one and a half inches wide, uh, etc. Now they're each modeled the same, right? We've got a extrusion and a sketch. But if I open each of these sketches up, this one is going to be centered on one of the holes and it's going to be symmetric about it. If I open this sketch up, everything is going to be dimensioned from this corner. And these are probably both techniques we've talked about or I've shown you in this class, whether I talked about it or not. Now, the idea with this part, let's say it's a light switch, right? A light switch cover for a wall. So a light switch cover for a wall, the dimensioning scheme on the left is going to make a little bit more sense, right? Because say we get a, a change and a customer wants the light switch cover to, to be bigger. All I have to do is double click a dimension, make it larger, and it's uh, going to kind of scale, right? The holes stay in the same place. If I do the same over here on the right, uh, increase the size in the same way, right? It doesn't scale. See how the holes are stuck in the middle? So it does matter how you dimension things in the model, right? Then this is what we call design intent. Design intent, you know, takes a while to get the hang of, right? It's not something you can necessarily learn from a book, but I think this is a good example. Uh, there are situations where the dimensioning scheme on the right might be what you want. Um, if the part, you know, fits in a corner and those two holes uh, need to stay near the left and bottom of the part, then it would make perfect sense. So let me reset our dimensions here and I'll explain why I'm always harping about using driven dimensions or sorry, driving dimensions in the drawing. We'll switch all these back. Okay. So I'll get rid of these for now. We'll pull up. Don't care. Pull up our, our drawing here. Now, oh, it's upset because I have. I think I have this sketch open. Is that it? Yeah. That yeah. if you have a sketch open and you open the drawing, oh my god, it, it gets uh, upset there. So we'll see. I might leave this in because it is a, a good kind of learning point. Okay. So I've got both parts on my drawing, and you'll see it real quick when I pull up model items. Right? They're gonna have different dimensioning schemes and the part on the left I can essentially control everything with one two three four dimensions the one on the right based on the dimensioning I need one two three four five six dimensions and again not the end of the world but what we don't want to do is use uh, driven dimensions here because if I leave this as driving dimensions, right? That means it drives to the model. So if I change this dimension here, let me change the other one over here just for fun, right? Change these dimensions from two to three. I can do it right here on the drawing. And when I hit the stoplight, it'll update the drawing. And if I go back here, it updates the model, right? And this is really convenient because it lets you work from the drawing. Um, you know, depending on how complicated your assembly is, it, it can be really, really helpful, right? So let me change them back. Stoplight. Okay, so let's say 
we didn't use model items, right? We we just went in and, you know, this is how some people, you know, kind of learn how to do SolidWorks, you know. You go Smart Dimension, right? It looks kind of the same. I can essentially fake the dimensioning scheme on the right with the dimensioning scheme on the left, right? And you might say, well, what's the difference, right? They look the exact same. Let me finish here. Right, right, no problem. They're, they're the exact same dimensioning scheme. The issue is that now when I double click this to change it, I can't, right? It's locked. And that's what we call a driven dimension. It's being uh, driven by, you know, the model. Over here, this is a driving dimension. I double click it, brings up a thing and I can change it. Now, uh, the one on the right, you're kind of faking the dimensioning scheme and they'll show up as light gray in SolidWorks. And that's how I know when I'm, you know, grading, if it's a, a driven or a driving dimension. And I take points for having driven dimensions. Uh, but that's the reasoning behind it. It lets you uh, get your design intent across. It lets uh, me see that you dimensioned it the way I wanted. And in the future, you know, if you use this software further on, it uh, creates kind of a, a connection between your drawing and your model. So people don't get surprised when they open your model and like, wait, these dimensions aren't the same as the ones in the drawing, right? They really should be the same. So that's that for this video. Hopefully that explained a little bit about the driven driving dimensions. I know I get them backwards sometimes, but driving, right? You double click it. You're going to drive the model driven is this over here. It's driven by the model. You can't change it in the drawing. So that's it for this video.